Hello children, how are you all today? I hope you all are healthy and happy. For today's English lesson, we are going to continue with the sentences chapter, the first chapter from your Mastering Grammar book. So children, you are aware that we had already started this chapter and we had learned about what sentences are. We had learned about the different kinds of sentences, namely the declarative or assertive sentences, the exclamatory sentences, the imperative sentences and the interrogative sentences. Right children? I told you that the declarative uh, sentences are used when we have to make a statement or we have to state a fact. Okay? And I told you about imperative sentences that when we advise, we suggest or we make requests or we seek permission. In that cases, what do we do? We use imperative sentences. With interrogative sentences, what did I tell you? I told you that with imperative sent uh, after imperative sentences, that in interrogative sentences, we have to ask questions. So uh, we use these kind of sentences to ask questions. Now the fourth one, the exclamatory helps us to express our strong emotions. Now children, with all these kind of sentences, I told you or I taught you how we can change our declarative sentence into an interrogative, exclamatory or even an imperative sentence. In our previous video lesson, you, ha you have also learned about uh, like subject and predicate, right? The two parts of a sentence, you have learned about that. And we had done a lots of example. I hope I made you clear. I hope your concept got little bit polished up. And now children for today's lesson, uh, we had finished, I think we had finished exercise E till exercise E. Now we are going to learn something more about subject predicate, how we can use them or identify them in a sentence. So children, Let's get started with today's video lesson and I welcome you all to your English class. So children, the first thing first. So I told you that subject is uh, that part of the sentence in which we talk about a subject that means a noun or a pronoun, the person or the thing which is being talked about, right? The topic, main topic of the sentence is or subject. And then what did I tell you about predicate? Predicate is that part in which the subject or the person, the thing uh, is doing some action or something is done to that, that person or that means something is said about that subject. Okay, children, I told you about uh, the predicate, these things. And I also told you that the predicate must have a verb with it. Okay, children, I told you this. Now we are going to learn about some features of subject and predicate. Now, children, the first thing you can see it in your book right there. So the subject is usually placed before the predicate. I gave you an example, I think. I gave you that example in the, uh, in the spring flowers bloom. Let's look at that example again to understand this feature. So what did I tell you? In the spring, Flowers bloom. Right children? So what is being told here? That not all sentences will have subject in the beginning. Okay? Some cases may arise where you can find the subject of the sentence at the end or in the middle. Okay? You shouldn't decide it on your own that the subject has always to be needs always to be present right in the beginning. So see here, like in the spring, this is a phrase here and then flowers bloom. What are we talking about? We are talking about flowers, right? We are uh, uh, talking about flowers here. So our subject here is the flowers. Okay, children. So subject here is flowers. And you can see this is a verb. So this will be definitely a part of the predicate as well as the phrase. So predicate here is in the spring bloom. Okay. In the spring bloom. 
so i gave you this example it was just to explain you this point that you do not you should not expect the subject this one to always appear in the beginning it sometimes it might not happen okay children so now moving to the second thing we have been told let's see the examples that is that are there in your book the late le uh, the letter came after a few days so in this example the letter came after a few days this one children you can see the subject is right in the front we are talking about the letter so subject is the letter and what is being said about the subject that it came after came is a verb so this is a verb this came after a few days so this is the verb so this part will be the predicate okay children now moving to the next one see let's see after a few days came the letter so you can see we can uh, we can uh, express ourselves we can arrange the words if it is in correct order if it is arranged in particular order sometimes predicate can be placed in the front and the subject may follow may come after it okay so children i hope i made this point clear now moving to the next one what is saying in imperative sentence the subject is always you i told you this that in imperative sentence the subject is always implied that means it is always you because we are talking to that person who is right in front of us that means we are talking we are referring to the second person which is you okay so if i tell you that come in obviously i am telling you right i am not telling someone else to come in you might have asked me may i come in ma'am so i said yes you may come in so i, I did not say you because it's very clear so you can see that there is an example go there okay so go there that means i am asking you to go there i have not mentioned in the sentence i have just told you go there but it is understood that i am asking you to leave okay now have the medicine regularly now this suggestion i am giving to the person who is right next to me or in front of me right i am not calling someone like hey listen and just uh, have your medicine no no right so the subject is really clear that i am asking who i am asking you so in imperative sentences in advises in command when you are uh, giving suggestions or when when you are uh, seeking permission these all kind of sentences the imperative sentences will have uh, you as an implied subject it is understood okay now the next point again in questions and exclamatory sentences i told you this the subject is placed somewhere in the middle right like who are you so my subject cannot be who in interrogative sentence right i am talking about you i am asking you so you has to be my uh, subject it is very clear so the order changes the subject and predicate can shift their places they they do not have fixed places okay so they can adjust among themselves but yes you have to see that the words are in order they cannot be jumbled up so i have already taught you with the interrogative exclamatory imperative sentences how you are to identify your subject and predicate so this is just a quick recall of what you have learned in your previous class before we move to the exercise that follow okay children uh, i think uh, we have the exercise next exercise is e so we'll have to do that so um okay so the dog is barking okay i told you that you have to uh, you have to agree the subject to the predicate like with plural verbs uh, with plural subjects you will have to use the plural verb like here you can see in your example the dog is barking so the dog is barking becomes the dogs are barking in plural and not is the dogs is doesn't agree to the subject it is not fitting to to the subject because we are talking about many dogs so the verb also has to be plural so for that you need to have a better understanding of the verbs and that you will eventually and gradually learn okay that won't come easy but yes with practice we can achieve that right children so now moving to the next part is that your exercise we need to do your exercise that follows identify the subject and the predicate so children 
uh, with e exercise that on pa that's on page number 9 of your book we will be doing that okay let's do it page number 9 and we have what number e exercise so we have been asked to uh, identify the subject and predicate circle the subject and underline the predicate so what do you need to do you have to write the sentence and we will have to circle the subject and underline the predicate read your instructions very carefully they did not ask you to write it separately but instead we have to use the uh, symbols okay so the first one has been done for you what is the first one john is going to the market so let's see that children you don't have to you just write the heading here what is the question and then we will follow one the question is john is going to the market okay children so about whom are we talking here we are talking about John it's very clear we are talking about him okay and what we are saying about John that is going to the market what is John doing John is going to the market so children we can see that John here will be circled and not underlined because why because we have been asked to do so in the instruction so let me change my pen's color and circle Mr. John here John will be circled and the predicate has to be underlined so we will be underlining the predicate underlined it okay children now let's look at the other sentence we have he managed to reach home on time so he managed to reach home number two he managed to reach home on time okay children here it is now let's see i told you that a noun a pronoun a determiners anything like that can be our subject so here is this pronoun here is this pronoun he I'm talking about which part which thing I'm talking about I'm talking about this he okay so what did he do he managed to reach home on time so he somehow managed he reached home on time so here we can see we are talking about he so he will be circled and this one managed to reach home on time is our predicate so that is underlined now look at three number three let's see that the king offered his advice to the farmer the king offered his advice to the farmer okay children it's right here so we can see that in uh, in the beginning we have two words now see I uh, I think you know that a uh, and and the are articles so this article and the noun that follows it we are talking about the king I told you the subject is that part which is uh, which uh, about which or who we are talking about so here we are talking about the king so this the king will be our subject and offered means to give right here offered so yes offered his advice so this is a verb verb is a part of the predicate so this children offered his advice to the farmer will be underlined because what did the king do whatever the king is doing or whatever is told about the king that he offered his advice to the farmer that will become our predicate because predicate tells us something about the subject now children moving to number four what is the fourth question rose was a princess who slept for a hundred years okay yes so rose was a princess number four children rose was a princess
who slept for a hundred years? Okay, now do you want to sleep for a hundred years? So Bichari Rose, she has asked to sleep for a hundred years, right? And doing nothing. So let's find out the subject in the sentence. Rose was a princess who slept for a hundred years. About whom are we talking in the sentence, children? About Rose. So Rose is going to be our subject because in subject, what do we do? We talk about which uh, or who the person is so was a princess was is the main verb here so was is actually a, an auxiliary verb but here we can see that this is acting as the main verb was a princess who slept for a hundred years okay children so you may think that slept is the verb here but it is acting as infinitive we will be doing what is an infinitive in the verb chapter okay or tense chapter whatever you prefer so we can do that one what is an infinitive we will be learning about that in uh, in that chapter now so here rose was a princess who slept for a hundred okay years. now what is number five the lion wanted to eat the rabbit let's move to five children Number five, the lion wanted to eat the rabbit. Okay, so we can see we are talking about the lion that who wanted. We are going to ask a question whenever we have to find the subject we are going to ask the question who or which okay so who did this thing who wanted so who wanted it the lion so the lion is going to be our subject and wanted is a verb and two is it as is an infinitive verb so now from wanted we are going to underline this and we are going to write that the lion is the subject because we have circled it it's understood we have been told to circle the subject and underline the predicate so wanted to eat the rabbit is the predicate now moving to number six children at one corner of the hall stood ramu number six at one corner of the hall stood ramu okay now children i what did i tell you you have to ask a question you have to ask because this is the verb this is the past tense of stand stand stood this is the second form of the verb right children so this is the past tense of stand and so we can see the verb is there now who stood we are talking about who standing at one corner of the hall we are talking about ramu ramu stood so this is the reason ramu so this is ramu right so let's correct it it's ramu and not rama ramu ramu stood so children now see the subject is not in the beginning but at the end okay so ramu is our subject and at one corner of the hall because stood cannot be uh, and sorry stood it, all, stood it also here only because it is the verb so this is the predicate and this children is the subject in the sentence okay i hope you understood this so children there is a correction to do okay we weren't doing e we were doing f okay we were doing exercise f please make the necessary correction and i'm really sorry okay so we were doing f so let's correct it okay now children moving to the next learning part that is phrases and clauses now children what did i tell you about phrases we had discussed phrases right in our earlier class now today for this lesson we are going to talk about little bit more on phrases and 
clauses so i did not tell you about clauses that will be a new thing so let's do it what do we know about phrases phrases are a group of words that make sense but not a complete sense why it, they are incomplete they do not have a subject and a predicate okay children how to identify what are phrases what are phrases you have to understand that phrases are those group of words which do not contain a subject and a predicate and what is a clause a clause is a group of words that will have a subject and a predicate okay so both of the parts of the sentence has to be present in a clause but for phrases there is no subject and no predicate so let's write down the definition and then we will move ahead with knowing uh, or learning some of the examples and learning through examples okay children so let's see now we are moving to phrases and clauses so what are phrases or what is phrase okay let's learn it in singular only first a phrase is a group of words words that do not make complete sense does not make complete sense as it has no subject and a predicate at is as it has no subject and predicate no predicate okay children so this is our definition for clauses like examples are across the road so children can you see any subject here what is happening across the road this is not clear okay in the park this is not clear what we are saying about in the park that that's not clear they are just group of words arranged properly but they do not make complete sense this is required to write a sentence but it is not complete on its own we have to use the other parts of the sentence as well the subject and the predicate part because this is incomplete so now let uh, let's learn about clause children let's see what a clause now children a clause is a group of words that makes sense okay it will be making some sense alone also making some sense but not complete sense we won't get whole idea about what is being said about so some sense but not complete sense okay and how it is different from a phrase how is it different it has a subject and a predicate so children you must know that a clause will be some group of words will which will have a subject and a predicate i hope i made this thing clear so now let let us look at some example what is it now we can write see in the book only you have this example the boy is going to the market okay the boy is going to the market now we have completed this so you can see children here the boy is going 
is making complete sense why is making some sense why because the boy is a subject here and is going is the verb so i told you that a clause will be having a subject and a verb but the boy is going where it is not making complete sense until we add the phrase to the market so see in this sentence a clause and a phrase is actually working together to complete the sentence so children we can see that a sentence is made up of what is made up of a clause and a phrase as well so a complex sentence can have a number of clauses in it okay so clauses can uh, be added in a sentence it can be added more and more so lots of phrases or lots of clauses can help us form a complex simple or compound sentence uh, we will be talking about those sentences you will learn that eventually how to form complex sentences i think most of you know how to use it but you don't know that we are actually using a lot of clauses when we are uh, composing a sentence right children i hope lots of us use it but we are not aware of it right now children see there are some features they will be talking about same things there are some features that a phrase does not com convey complete sense it won't be conveying complete sense it does not have a verb and a subject i told you this that it will not consist it will obviously have a some have some part of the predicate but it will not have the verb a clause has a subject and a verb i show you this it should have a subject and it should have a verb so that part is in the predicate only it may or not may complete make complete sense so it can be like if i say the boy is going this is complete actually it's making complete sense alone but it's not making complete sense so this is a clause now now children what it is usually a part of a sentence so we know phrase and clause both of them are parts of sentence especially clauses clauses have to be the part because it consists of the verb so they are important components of a sentence okay children i hope this is clear now let's move to g because we have done f which we uh, which i had mistakenly written as e i hope you correct it and now uh, g number c tick the correct option we are to choose some uh, words there some group of words are marked in bold letters so we can see them uh, like in the first one we can see she left the house at noon the uh, the words at and noon are in bold so we have to tell whether it is a phrase or a clause so children we will be doing some at least today in this class let's decide like three three questions okay and we will be carrying that to our next video now the first one of g we are doing g what is the first question tick the correct option she left the house at noon number 1 she left the house at noon so children we have been asked whether at noon is a subject sorry is a clause or phrases so here see at noon so this children do not have a subject do not have a verb so it is not a clause instead it is a phrase okay we are done with one now moving to two let's see what's at two mary embroidered a handkerchief for her mother so mary embroidered mary a handkerchief for her mother right for her mother so children this part is in bold embroidered a handkerchief now you can see embroidered is a verb it means working with the thread and with needle to embroider in some piece of fabric of uh, any clothes okay so embroidered a handkerchief this is a verb so a clause has a verb so this one embroidered let's use black because we had used black in the previous one so this one embroidered her handkerchief
is what children is a clause okay okay children okay so children let it be till here only we will be doing the rest of the numbers in our next class otherwise the video will get too lengthy and too boring for you we will meet in another class with uh, this lesson initially we will start with this lesson uh, we have done already one and two and then three to six we will be doing in our next video lesson children thank you for watching the video do join me in your next video lesson to complete this exercise and also we will do some other exercises in our next video so have a great day. Bye-bye.